acknowledging him in here today. Somebody open up your mouth and just tell God thank you. Let him know that you appreciate him. You, he's worthy of our worship. He's worthy of our praise. Is anybody thankful for God in this place? Did he wake you up this morning? Did, did he start you on your way? Did he put food on anybody's table, a place to stay? Come on and give a great God a real big praise in this place. If you're watching online, you're tuning in the radio right where you are, begin to give God some praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will. Look at somebody and say, I will, I will. I will rejoice and I'm going to be glad. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So Father, right now in the name of Jesus, do what you want to do. Say what you want to say, God. You're a good God. You're a mighty God. And, and we worship and we praise you today, God. God, if it had not been for you who was on our side, Lord, some of us don't know where we would be. So, so we're grateful today, God. We, we can't help but to clap our hands and we can't help but to lift them and we can't help but to open our mouth just to tell you thank you. God, move in this place. God, move wherever your people are. God, for those who are on their way, get them here safely, Lord. For those who are still laying there, God, get them a mind to come into the sanctuary, Lord. God, I thank you in advance for what you're going to do. Bless the praise and worship team, God. Bless the musicians, God. Bless the service, God. God, you're celebrating graduates today. Bless them indeed in a special way, God. But most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus, the one that lived, the one that died, the, the one that rose again for us, God. These things I pray in your name. Come on, somebody say amen. 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 Come on, give God some praise in this place.
above the nation. And the glory above the nation. Give God the highest praise. Acknowledge him always. Let all the people say hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah.
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And the reason why our God is so worthy, because he's just great. Amen.
another thing to know about it. Can I get a witness? It's one thing to see it, but it's another thing to know it. Tell somebody that God is great. I mean, tell somebody else God is great. He's great. He's a great, he's a great, 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 great God. Are we fan? Oh, yes, he is. He's a great God. God bless you. Thank you, choir. Thank you, praise team. Oh, Lord. He is a great God. He's a great God. He's a great God. He's a great God. He is a great God. Amen. I Sometimes we tell other persons how great God is, but I believe every now and then you have to tell him he's great. Lord, you're great. You're great. You're great. You're great. You're great. You're a great God. I had the privilege of this week going down to Baltimore, Maryland to be at the home going services for our second assistant presiding bishop, Bishop Michael Hanna. And as we were there celebrating, amen, his life, I realized again, sisters and brothers, don't wait until someone passes to celebrate them. Can I get a witness? Don't wait until someone passes to celebrate them. Amen. It's wonderful to celebrate them while they're yet still living in the land of the living. Tell somebody, I celebrate you. Don't, don't be afraid to tell them. Don't be afraid. Amen. 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 I, I found out I found out not only is God great, but I found out even in our flawed self, because some of even in our flawed self, there's something good that we can extract. Right, Camille? There's something good that we can extract from them. There's something good that we can extract, pull from them. Amen. And I praise God. Amen. You ought to let folk know. Amen how much you appreciate them and to thank them. If not for some great thing, think of a little small thing. Amen. For what the Lord does, he does, he does well. Momentarily, I'm going to ask those who are on the uh, system to help me out. Uh, Dante, whoever needs to do what needs to do. I need to put Romans 12 on the, on the screen. Those who are uh, Facebooking and all that kind of stuff, God bless you. Romans 12 is on the screen momentarily. I'm going to ask the congregation, you're going to either read in your Bible, on your phone, or you're going to read it on the screen. But I want us to read that scripture responsibly, responsibly, which simply means I'll read the first verse and you read the second one. All right? Romans 12. Thank you, sir. Romans 12. I'm not ministering from that. I just want to read that scripture. Amen. I wanted to bless you and those of you who have been reading through the chapter a day, and today is Romans, I believe today is Romans 12, right? Is that the day? Okay. Romans 12. <laughs> Getting like my wife now. Romans 12. Amen. Thank you, sir. And in deference to the day, in deference to the, the scripture, you do me a favor, if you're able to stand for these next three and a half minutes, if you can, that, that'll be all right. But if you can, stand. Would you please stand? Again, I'm going to be reading the first verse, and I'm going to ask that you read verse number two. They'll, I'll read three. You'll read number four. I'll read five, and you'll read. Whew, you're learning. Boy, I'm telling you, we're going to celebrate the graduates, the retirees, and the counters. Amen, even this very, even this very moment. And we're not going to read it real quickly and rapidly, but we're going to take our time and read it. The Apostle Paul makes this statement and begins chapter number 12, commencing at verse number 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, 
that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Read. That's enough right there to stop, but we must keep on going. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. So, we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministry, or he that teacheth on teaching. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Okay, read that again. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Brotherly love, beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. And all together, the, let us read. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Can we say amen? The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. So easy. So easy. Somebody, please. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you so easy. So easy. So easy. Easy to love. 
there's a sweet spirit in the sanctuary this morning. The anointed psalmstress and writer of songs, Pastor Andre Crouch, wrote a book for the song in 1972 for many of the younger ones were born, titled My Tribute. My Tribute. She turned to the book of Haggai. The book of Haggai in the Old Testament. The words of the song that he, write, he wrote was simply, How can I say thanks for all the things you have done for me? Things so undeserved you gave to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude for all that I am and ever hope to be. I owe it all to God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory for the things he has done. With his blood he saved me. With his power he raised me. To God be the glory for the things he has done. Oh, let me live my life. Let it be pleasing, Lord, to thee. And if I gain any praise, let it go to Calvary. With his blood, he saved me. With his power, he raised me. To God be the glory for the things he has done. The Apostle Paul says, when I was a child, I acted like a child. And I realize we have younger individuals in here this morning. And they may not comprehend the potency or the power of not only these words that Andre Crouch has wrote, written and, and sang, but sisters and brothers, we who are a little older will understand and should understand that without him, you and I are nothing. We are what we are because of God. That's why, that, that's it. You, regardless of how talented you think you are, or we think we are, if there be any glory, if there be any praise, let it go to Calvary. What a mighty God we serve. Can you just lift your hands and tell the Lord, thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Without him, I would be nothing. Without him, I would fail. Without him, I'd be like a ship drifting without a sail. Oh, sisters and brothers. Hallelujah, Jesus. Today's Youth in Action service, Youth Explosion, I might have to cross that out and make it Adult in Action service. <laughs> adult Explosion. Are there any adults, Chico, in the sanctuary that want to give God the praise? others but when I think of the goodness of Jesus all 
what he's done for me. Somebody say me. My soul cries out hallelujah. Hallelujah. I praise God for saving me. Saved by his power divine. Saved to a new life sublime. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete because I'm saved. 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 Bless the name of Jesus. Save, save, save. Save, 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 save. Say, I, I, I'm still six foot two, but I'm saved. Uh, <laughs> I still weigh a couple of pounds, but I'm saved. I, I, I'm, I'm still, I'm still who I am, but I'm saved. I'm, I'm a, I'm a new creation. I'm an old, I'm a brand new man. All things are passed away. I've been born again. I, I <laughs> you may know something about me. And I may know something about you. Right. However, all things are passed away. And behold, all things become new. Somebody yell, new. Newness in Christ. Hallelujah. Newness in Christ. As Pastor Boone would say, y'all sit down. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. The book of Haggai. Bless your name, Lord. Chapter number one, verse number 12. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shetiel, and Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, if all the remnant of the people obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the words of Haggai the prophet as the Lord their God has sent him and the people did fear before the Lord. Then spake Haggai the Lord's messenger in the Lord's message unto the people saying I am with you, saith the Lord. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the governor, the son of Shetiel. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jasadek, the high priest. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. Chapter number two, in the seventh month, in the one and twentieth day of the month, came the word of the Lord by the prophet Haggai, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the governor. Speak now to uh, Joshua the high priest and speak to the remnant of the people saying who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory and how do ye see it now is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing Yet be strong 
O Zerubbabel. Yet be strong, O Joshua. Yet be strong, all the people of the land, saith the Lord. And somebody say, and work. And work, for I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. Can the church say amen? I feel the Holy Ghost in this place right now. It was the Honorable Bishop Ross Paddock, our former presider of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World, as he would go around the country sharing the gospel and the word of God. He made this statement. He says he believes people will do right when they know what right is. He said, as a whole, the body of Christ will do right when they are informed as to what right really is. Our text talks in regards to the rebuilding of the temple in Judah. The main individuals in the text, Prophet Haggai, the governor Jerusalem, the high priest Joshua, those are the main players by name. And then there are the people or, as the Bible says, the remnant of the people. The prophet was important because the prophet Haggai, there are folk who go around saying they're prophets, and I'm not knocking them. But I believe the prophet has a connection with God. The Bible says you'll know them by their fruit. If you be a prophet, you prophesy, and your prophecy does not come to pass. We label you as a false prophet. Well, I'm about 95% right. 95% right is wrong because you said that God said. So the key is not to bring God in it when you are doing your own thing. But the minute you say God said, thus saith the Lord, then I'm going to be a attentive to what you say and I'm going to listen attentively because if you are a true prophet it must come to pass and if not step aside the Lord uses Haggai glad my father and mother didn't name me Haggai uses Haggai to be the vessel chosen to speak and he spoke to the governor he spoke to the legislative group he spoke to the high priests those who were allowing in from a spiritual standpoint and there was a message and the message in chapter one simply says something wrong somewhere he says y'all live in large in your wonderful uh, two story uh, um, condo places and you know got your Tudor home and he says and the temple of God is in ruins he says something wrong something wrong somewhere he goes to say that not only is it wrong he says verse 6 you have sown much but bring in little 
You eat, but have not enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You, you are clothed, but there is none warm. You have earned wages. And your wage has been put in a bag with a hole in it. Years ago, that was one of the main, main uh, service, uh, scriptures they used for the folk not giving and, and not tithing. Mm -hmm. you, you find out where your money went, the Lord put a hole in that bag. And, and you, so you better get yourself together and start giving God what's his. I still believe today God should get his. Tell somebody first. Oh, now nah, this is not a message of regards. This is not a message in regards to tithing now. However, I believe we have to put God first. That was kind of weak, but I, I'll go with it. You, you got it. Give God what is his. Could it be there are some problems and there's a hole in your pocket, in your pocketbook, on your debit card? On your, well, it can't be give a fly because you got to have some money for that. And you got to have some money for cash app. So it can't be holding that. But could it be what the, there's a blessing in putting God first? He goes further and tells him to go and get the wood out of, out of the, uh, the, the fields. But he says, verse 9, you look for much and lo, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. I blew upon it. Why? Why did you do that, Lord? Be be because of mine house is a waste, and every man runneth unto his own house. Therefore, the heaven over you is stayed from dew. This is not climate control here. This is not global warming here. And upon the mountains, and upon your corn, and upon all the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon the, that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the hands, there's a drought. There's a drought. I'm making a drought. I'm putting forth a drought because you're more concerned about you than you are concerned about the thing of God. Do you realize that God, if you take care of God, God will take care of you? How do you receive a prophet telling you that you're wrong? How do you receive a prophet telling you you ought to come a little higher? How do you receive a prophet telling you there's a drought, there's no dew, there's no rain, there's no gathering of crop because you have erred? Well, the Bible says in verse number 12, when Zerubbabel, when Joshua, and when the remnant of the people heard that, they did something wonderful. They obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the words of Haggai the prophet at the Lord uh, their God had sent him and the people did fear before the Lord. Don't ever get mad at God for God correcting you. Just tell him thank you. For whom the Lord loveth. Don't tell me you love Susie May. And she acting like a terror. Susie May need to be corrected. Now I'm not telling you how to correct Susie May. There are some biblical references on how to do so. Some folk use time out. We didn't have time out back then, uh, uh, Camille Olivia. We didn't have time. That didn't exist until this new generation came. But back in the day, 
there was no such thing as timeouts. Lord, have mercy. Back in the, come on, can I get a witness? The Hat Sisters know about that, right? There was no such thing as it's timeout. But back in the day, mama and dad get to you and talk to you a little while. And a lot of times they're doing more talking than they are, oh my, but that's holding the thing. But the prophet shares with them, and this people obeyed the voice of the Lord their God, and they adhered to the words that Haggai said. The Lord then speaks to Haggai again and said, tell him, tell Zerubbabel, tell Joshua, and tell the people, give them a message for me, and say, I am with you, save the Lord, verse number 13. And then what begins to happen, he simply says in verse 14, and the Lord stirred up the spirit. Stirred up the spirit of the government official. Stirred up the spirit of the high priest. And stirred up the spirit of the people of God. I wonder what would happen if there was a, a stirring of God's spirit among us. I wonder what would happen if there was a stirring of God's spirit among the missionaries. What would happen if there was a stirring of God's spirit among the ministerial staff or a stirring of God's spirit among the deacons or a stirring of God's spirit among the musicians or a stirring of God's spirit among the ushers? I wonder what would happen. Oh, God, stir us. Oh, God, stir us. Oh, God, stir us. Come on, prophet. Oh, God, stir us. Stir us, Lord, until our very essence will be different. Stir us until we see you and you only. Stir us, Lord, until I understand that in you I live and move and have my being. Stir us is when they stir it and begin to stir it up, something began to happen. The people got a hold of the vision. The people saw it. They didn't see before, but now they see that this is a time to build the temple. And the people began to work. It is said that after they had done that and they came and did the work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. Chapter number two of this short book says, the Lord says, Haggai, you're doing a good job, sir. I want you to now speak to Zerubbabel, the governor. I want you to speak to the high priest, Joshua. And I want you to speak to the residue or the remnant of the people. And I want you to ask them a question. He says, I want you to say, who among you saw this house in her first glory? And how do you see it now? Uh, is it not in your eyes in comparison of it is nothing. Oh, but he says, he says, be strong, Zerubbabel. Be strong, Joshua. Be strong, people. He says, because the Lord hath said, all you ought to be strong and work, for I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. Tell somebody the Lord is with me. That's what that's what they that that's what the Bible says that He says that they will, the Lord is with them. I, I can't really I shouldn't tell you to say that because I don't know if the Lord's with you or not. Seriously. But there is a unison, a togetherness that, as Bishop Paddock says, 
People will do right when they know what right is. They heard the writer, they heard Habakkuk simply say, this is what the Lord said. Be, tell somebody, be strong. If it's a woman, say, be strong, sister. If it's a brother, say, be strong, bro. Yeah, yeah, be, be, be strong, you know, give him that. Come on, Lawrence, you know what I'm saying, man. Be right, Lawrence, Lawrence Jr., Lawrence Jr., Lawrence, Lawrence Jr., Lawrence Jr., be strong, bro. Be strong, be strong, be strong, be, be strong, be strong. Oh, you in trouble, boy? Okay. <laughs> be, be strong. Be, brother, stand up. Now, you, you should know by now whether you're a brother or not. You should know whether you're a male or not. If you're a male, born a male, stand up. I'm not going to ask you for no money. It's all right. It's okay. It's okay. Keith, thank you, brother. Tell, tell, thank you. Any more brothers sitting down? All right. Alex, Alex, stand up. There, 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 there. Thank you, my friend. Stand up. Tell the person next to you, be strong. Be, be strong. Now, say it with a lot of force. Not to them, but say it loud. Be strong. Be strong. Say it loud. Pretend you're watching the Cowboys or the Eagles or any of those bad teams. Just, you know, just, and you're rooting for them. Tell, some, tell the Lord, be strong. Be strong. All right, I hear you. Thank you, brother. Sit down, brothers. Javion, come here, Javion, real quickly, real quick. Javion, that's you. You know who you are, aren't you, Javion? Move, sir, move. Look, don't make me come get you. Uh -uh. Move, move, move. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Hands out of the pocket. Come on, come on, come on. Hands out of your pocket. Hands out of your pocket. Hands out of your pocket. Stand strong. There you go. You look, look at my the good, your originals, uh, Brooklyn cloth. I'm going to give him his baptismal certificate. Now you're smiling now, huh? Were, were you you're afraid I was going to do it? Take. This is Youth in Action Sunday. He got baptized. Somebody shout glory. Thank you. He didn't know what I was going to do. He was scared. Hey, man, we told you to be strong, bro. It's okay. We told you. Sisters, stand up, and I'm almost done. All right, sister lot. I heard you, sister lot. Sisters, tell the person next to you, be strong. I see your hand waving, mother. I see your hand. Tell, tell somebody else, be strong. Now open up your mouth and pretend you're cheering for... Your daughter or your son just got their diploma. Hey. Come on, big white. Hey, hey, come on. Tell, tell the Lord, tell the Lord, thank you. Tell, be strong. be strong. One more time, be strong. Be strong. Thank you, you may be seated. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Pastor Robinson, hey. what in the world are you trying to say? I'm saying as the Lord spoke to Zerubbabel, the governor, spoke to uh, Joshua, the high priest, and spoke to all of the remnant of the people. He spoke to Haggai and told Haggai, you've got to tell them what I want them to know. You have to know that you know that you know. You and I, as members of the body of Christ, have to be aware of the fact that God moves by his spirit. And it wasn't until there was an awareness that the awakening occurred in 
those individuals in various positions rose up. The spirit stirred in them and they began to work. Would you say for the last time, tell somebody, work. Work. We're going to celebrate the retirees and the graduates today. This may sound strange to the graduates, but please check out the retirees. I'm going to ask not just the retirees who are in here for these two persons today, but if you have retired in the last 20 years, stand on your feet. Don't sit down yet. If you have re get up, man. You ain't that retired. Get up. You, you're good, sir. Thank you. Look around, graduates. Look around. I know you're eighth graders and 12th graders and high school and college. Look around. These individuals have a wealth of knowledge. They've been professionals, doctors, and they've been medically, they've been over uh, state and local and federal. They've been in places that you hope to arrive at. Oh, gosh, I should have said 30 years, huh? <laughs> okay, Pastor Bull, I'll say 30 years. <laughs> oh, 40 years, all right, Professor. That's, that's what I'm, look at this, look at this. What do we do with such wealth of knowledge? Do you sit down and say, well, they just old folk. I beg to differ. I beg to differ. Some of those old folk are packing. Some of those old folk if you would ask them as he gathers Jazzy, if, 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 just hold on to it. Don't let her go. Thank you. If, some, if you would just ask some of us old folk, we could tell you about some finances. We could tell you don't always go to Wawa every day. Right. Hold your money. Save your money. Because, Lawrence, as you well know, college is expensive. Y'all sit down because y'all been standing too long. <laughs> Thank you, Bass. Thank you. <laughs> and the younger generation, Minister Jeff, they've got something to tell us. They're sharp with their technology. The reason I got the phone I got now, because my daughter has the same phone. And wisdom says, get the phone that Angie has, then she can tell you everything about the phone because I don't have time trying to figure it all out. And, and you know, I throw the phone down, but it's too expensive. I can't throw it down. I'm keeping that phone. It costs me too much money. I'm going to keep it until it dies. It's above, it's above my pay grade, Angie. I don't know how, I don't know, I mean, I'm going off, I'm sorry. I don't know how a child can have a $1,600 phone. That's, that's not, obviously it's not, let me move on. My point is, sisters and brothers, it's time for every one of us here to work. Kingdom work. The other day, I'm pulling up. The, the assignment we had with the uh, security, what was that, uh, Homeland Security. Thank you, sir, for that. I appreciate it. And while we were doing Homeland Security, I wrote something down in my notes before that. And it was simply this expression, too few do too much. Too, T-O-O, Few, F-E-W, do T-O-O much. And I had to restrain myself. 
from shedding tears. And I realize we're in this together. Where are those anointed individuals who have an assignment on their hand? And why aren't they doing it? As a leader, I immediately came to the conclusion, it's not them, it's you. I point the finger to me. I point the finger to leadership. I couldn't wait get in church today. I was so glad, thank you, Lord, because I knew individuals like Camille Olivia, who's playing the saxophone, who is gifted. I'm still preaching now. We're going where we're going. It's, it's like people aren't rushing to get out of the church. But they're saying, Pastor, what can I do to help? How can I help those individuals? What is it that you want, what needs to be done? My response to you is, I'm glad you asked. Sisters and brothers, my desire is based upon what the writer has, uh, Haggai said that the Spirit of God moved upon the governor, moved upon the high priest, moved upon the remnant. Their spirit was touched. They were energized. And they did the work for God's glory. Because the Lord says, I am with you. <clears throat> and he simply says these tremendous words, be strong. Be strong. Be strong. As you bow your heads this very morning. There will be a request made, an opportunity given to you. While the camera is on while the video from security is filming. I'm not looking for critics. I'm not looking for individuals who have a lot to say but do nothing. But individuals simply as the prophet Isaiah says, Lord, hear my, send me, use me. Because there's a work to be done. And as I am praying, and as you listen very attentively, In the course of this prayer, if that is your desire to be stirred up, to be strong, and to work, where God is a whatever it may be in the kingdom, you're going to be given the opportunity to stand up and make that as a sign of your agreement. Individuals commit themselves to 30 year mortgages by just signing on the line. But commitment to Christ is a lifetime commitment. It requires you to be steadfast and unmovable. It requires you to understand clearly 
that for God I live and for God I die. And so this morning as you are listening to the prayer, if you're ready to be stirred up, if you're ready to be strong, if you're ready to know the Lord is on your side, and you're not standing because of somebody else next to you, but you're standing because you heard the voice of the Lord. Lord, here am I. You send me. Because it's a work to be done. It's not about building a building like the temple. There are souls that need to be saved, matured, and developed. Much more land that needs to be possessed so God would be exalted. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we ponder and listen very attentively, thank you for the spirit of Haggai, that anointed prophet who spoke and the people that heard him knowing because it came from the Lord. This very morning, Lord, we also are here. We're here as a congregation. We're here as a group of individuals in various areas of this state. Lord, whatever hands you have gifted us to do we work together to accomplish your purpose Lord as those are beginning to stand who realize I've got to be stirred up I've got to be strong I've got to be obedient because I know the Lord is on on our side and with us. We stand in not our own confidence, Lord, but our confidence in you. Thank you. Thank you for the gifts. Thank you for the anointing that comes on and in our lives. Now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time for all of us put our shoulder to the wheel. Strengthen the male, strengthen the females. Allow the older ones to understand they are not excluded. Allow the younger ones to understand they are included and we are learning, working together. Father, now there are time periods that physically people are prohibited from doing certain things. But Lord, you've still given them a brain. Your spirit still emanates inside of them. Let them utter wisdom and knowledge. Let them utter love and compassion for those who are yet still developing. Let them be an encouragement to others. I thank you for it. I thank you, Lord, for those who are being baptized and are going to be baptized. Those who are going to be in fear with your spirit, speaking in other tongues as the spirit give utterance. Those who are going to proclaim wherever they may be that to the utmost, Jesus saved. I thank you for the work being done. We pray for the bereaved families. Pray for those who are incarcerated. Those who are in the nursing homes. We can do it with your help, Lord. Because, Lord, you have stirred up our spirit. Thank you for divine favor that only comes from you. And we will be so careful to give your name the glory, the praise, and the honor. 
This we do pray in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. And amen. Those who are standing, thank you, my sisters. Thank you, my brothers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The song writer says, you'll never be the same again. Jesus Christ come in. A new life will begin. Now is the time. There was great joy and jubilation for that which was has now been changed. And there was a new temple arising up. And the prophet said to the Lord, is no comparison. The, the power, the anointing, the spirit will be greater than it was before. My sisters and brothers, be blessed. The Lord, keep you, smile upon you, lift you up, sustain you. Love him as he loves you. Give him, give him all and watch God show himself to be faithful. In Jesus' name is my prayer. Pastor Boone, please. Bishop was ministering, and you knew that it was God. You knew there was such an anointing, praise God, that was coming forth. And I looked, praise the Lord, it was wonderful, over at uh, Brother Bass. And we were talking about the glory, and I said, that's the glory. There are people that stand, you can see the glory of God. It's see the glory of God, praise God. At this time, preparing for the celebration, praise God. Graduate, graduates, I should say. Praise the Lord at this time. Sister Rita. Got a mic? Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. What do we do? Everybody ought to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Everybody ought to praise the Lord. Clap your hands, everybody. Clap your hands, everybody. the Lord has just two amen and so I say praise the Lord everybody everybody ought to praise the Lord amen we are here today to celebrate another class amen the class of 2023 Woo here at Christ Gospel Church amen so we're
we're going to start, we're not going to take up too much of your time, but I'm going to ask all of those who are here uh, who graduated and are retired, if you can just come and take a seat in these, in these uh, 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 chairs here, the seating here in the front or right here in the front. Come on, graduates. Come on, retirees. Come on, y'all. We're just here to celebrate and love on you. The Lord is good. And here, again, we are another year to celebrate and to give honor to those who have stepped up and moved forward and they strived and they struggled. But here they are today for us here at Christ Gospel Church to say praise the Lord, that we are proud of you, that we celebrate you, amen. Come on, congregation. Some of them could have gave up and, and not finished. Some of them could have said, you know what, this is too much for me and not got it done. But these graduates, they did it. 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 Amen. Amen. So I'm going to call uh, Sister Lynette White up, and she's going to introduce our first uh, class of graduates. Amen. I want to go in order, so we're going to do eighth grade. Our first graduate, praise the Lord, by the way. The Lord. Didn't start it, didn't even say praise the Lord to y'all. Our first graduate is going to be Victoria Ruth Lynn Edwards. She's graduating from eighth grade. She is the daughter of Robert and Bashana Edwards. Victoria graduated from Winslow Township Middle School on June 14th. In the fall, she will be attending Camden County Technical High School, where her focus will be law and public safety. Her favorite subject was science. Victoria enjoys competitive cheerleading, playing with the family dog, and spending time with friends. She's so looking forward to trying out for the high school cheerleading and track teams. Let's say amen and give her a round of applause. Our next graduate, Serenity Mariah McCarty. Please stand. She is a National Honor Society student. She is the daughter of Patrick McCarty and Nikki Vinson. She is the granddaughter to Deacon Percy and missionary Patricia McCarty. Serenity was inducted into the National Junior Honor Society on May 31st. The NJHS recognized middle level students who excel academically and, excuse me, and exemplify service, leadership, character, and citizenship. We say congratulations to Serenity and keep up the great work. Now, I can't see you graduates because I have on my glasses and they're for reading. So if you're here, stand up and come up on the um, rostrum, okay? Our next graduate is Gerald K. Rivera. He is graduating from eighth grade. He is the son to Lori White Rivera and William Rivera. He is the grandson of Evangelist White and the late Elder Leon White. He graduated from Huntington School in Syracuse, New York on June 22nd. Amen. Our next graduate is Lashanae Miller. Did I say your name right? Okay. She is the daughter of Natasha and Roland Phillips. She graduated from Middle Township Middle School on June 15. She will begin attendance at Middle Township High School in the fall. When she says, um, when 
she paints a picture of her future. She sees herself as completing medical school and on her way to becoming a pediatrician. She wants to change the world by providing free health care and checkup for children. Her favorite biblical character is David because he showed bravery despite of his size. And the person that she looks up to at church is missionary Darrell Robinson because she always takes care of her and she is always encouraging her. Next we have Jamora Lene A. Spellman. She is affectionately known as Mama. She was born April 6, 2006, and is the great-great-granddaughter of the late mother, Laura Lee Williams. She is the great-granddaughter of Sister Beverly Williams, the granddaughter of Stacy Williams, and the daughter of Darice Williams. She was baptized in Jesus' name and has completed DePolito Elementary School and graduated eighth grade while maintaining A's, B's, and C's at Veterans Memorial Middle School. She has been praise dancing since she was five years old under the teaching and instruction of her aunts, Evangelist Cameline Nathaniel and Sister Danielle Caldwell, stressing that praise dance is ministering to yourself as well as to others. When asked who her most influential teacher is, she responded with Mrs. Kohansky, her math teacher, who taught her how important math is every day in life, and also encouraged her to be positive and to believe in herself and to achieve all her goals. When asked where she sees herself in 10 years, she said after high school, she wants to pursue being a registered nurse and a veterinarian, and she loves helping people and animals, especially cats and dogs. When asked how her faith in God has helped her in her pursuit of education and excellence, she stated that my faith in God has allowed me to believe that he helps me through ups and downs and will supply my every need. And so my prayer is that I will always rely on his guidance. When asked about the racial divide in the country, her answer was she wants to maintain unity and change, and she believes that those in charge of making laws should make them for everyone fairly and equally so that she can, can compete as equals. When you see inequality, you should be able to speak out and to prayerfully get a positive change. Her favorite person at Christ's Gospel is her aunt evangelist, Cameline Nathaniel. She makes her realize that she should put God first in life and depend on him. And she loves how she is determined and dedicated in her walk with the Lord. And she hopes to do that as well. This is just a little bit about Jamora at 14 years of age. And we, her family, which includes us, Christ Gospel as a whole, we look for more as she gets older by the grace and mercy of God. We hope to see great things from her. Our next graduate is Akila Coney. She is the daughter of Trina Mabry and the granddaughter to evangelist Lily Bell Mabry and the late Deacon Albert Mabry. Akila graduated from Middle Township Middle School on June 15th. In the fall, she will begin her academics at Middle Township High School. Akila will be a part of the medical track during um, her high school tenure. While at middle school, she, she was a part of the field and hockey team, band, cheerleading, and she was inducted into the National Honor Society in her seventh grade year. Akila wants to be a general surgeon. Her hobbies include diamond painting, crocheting, cooking, fishing, riding bikes, and much more. Akila is very energetic and enthusiastic and, will, and is always eager to do new things. Amen. Let's give her a round of applause. Our next graduate is Lawrence Burden, Jr. He is the son to Pastor Lawrence and Lady Sharonda Burden. 
He graduated on June 15th from Hamilton High School, and he was accepted at Drexel University, where he will begin this fall. His choice of study will be business administration. And when asked what his favorite scripture is, he says Romans 14, 10 through 12. But why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we all shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, say the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Only God can judge me. Amen. Our next graduate is Journey Chitty. She is the daughter of Donna Brown and the granddaughter to sister Vicki Brown and brother Louis Brown. Journey graduated from Middle Township High School on June 16th, and her plans this fall are to attend the University of Harvard and to major in political science. Our next graduate is Azara Skinner. She is, she is the daughter of Lamont and Tisha Skinner and the granddaughter to Elder Michael and missionary Mercedes Gaines. Azara graduated from Lloyd C. Bird High School in Chesterfield, Virginia. Azara graduated with a 3.7 GPA. She received numerous honors and awards. Here are just a few. National Art Honor Society, National Society of High School um, Scholars, and I think that's it. No, it was more. Advanced Diploma, and she completed a course through Bright Point College. She, uh, as everyone in her family calls her Zari, she will attend Virginia Commonwealth University in the fall where her choice of studies is majoring in psychology and minor in art. This will prepare her to work in the mental health profession, specializing in art therapy with children and experiencing trauma. Our next graduate is Anaya Anna Moore. She is the daughter to Frankie and Dorka Moore and the granddaughter to sister Karen Moore. Karen Williams, I'm sorry. Anaya graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Marketing and is hopeful for a bright future in the world of business and law. And now we have some retirees. Velma Palmer. She retired from the Woodbine Developmental Center on May 1st after 35 years of dedicated service. And then we have Loretta Carey. She retired after 36 years of work and dedication in the field of early childhood education. And now we're going to have... Come on, let's give our graduates a hand. Yes, they deserve it. The world could be clapping for them, doing things that they have no business doing, but you're their brother, you're their sister, and so we're so very, very proud of them, amen? I will be introducing our, the next class, which is our college students, amen? Our first uh, college student is none other than Indira George. I know she's not here. Indira is the daughter of Amelia English. She graduated on May 18th from Atlantic Cape Community College with a degree in psychology. Indira was asked what her favorite scripture is. She stated, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. It, it has truly been my faith and my trust in God that has brought me, brought her this far. Indira George. Our next graduate is Anastasia Anna Green, amen? Now I know that name you don't know, 
but this is the granddaughter of Sister Stacy Green. Right. Anastasia received her master's degree from New York University of Engineering. Anastasia Green. Our next graduate is Shekinah Latrane May. Woohoo! Shekinah is the daughter of Tracy and Stephen May Sr. Shekinah graduated summa cum laude from, yes, woohoo! From Rowan University on May 8th. On May 8th, receiving a bachelor's degree, a bachelor's, a bachelor of arts degree in early childhood education and a minor in psychology. She also received certification to teach English as a second language at Rowan University. She excelled in academics by achieving the Dean's and President's List status every semester. <laughs> Shekina was inducted into the International Education Sorority Kappa Delta Phi Honor Society. Shekina relies on the word found, the word found, words found in Philippians 4:13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Shekina May. Our next graduate is Anaya Anna Moore. She is the daughter of Frankie and Dorcas Moore, granddaughter to Sister Karen Williams. Anaya graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Marketing and is hopeful for a bright future in the world of business and law. Anaya served as student volunteer for the Women's Center, a residence assistant, president of the Central Marketing Association, Anaya is currently working in the financial technology industry. However, she also has aspirations of furthering her education and embarking on a career in corporate law. Anaya Moore. Our next graduate is none other than Tiffany Palm. <laughs> Tiffany is the daughter of Sister Wanda and the late, I'm sorry, Sister Wanda Young and the late Gregory Palm. Amen. She is the mother of two to Javion and Zari. Tiffany graduated from Atlantic Cape, Atlantic Cape Community College on May 19th, where she received an associate's degree in science. She will attend Rutgers Camden in the fall to pursue her studies in criminal justice pre-law. She is to go, I'm sorry, her go-to scripture can be found in Psalms 30 and 5. For his anger endures but a moment, in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. When asked why she chose this scripture, she states, because my journey has been tough and filled with many tears. However, those tears laid the foundation for her testimony. She says, I have triumphed over this hurdle and I can't wait for the next. Yeah. Tiffany Palm. Yeah. Yeah. Our next graduate is Alexis Chanel Richardson. She is the daughter of Deacon Tyrone and Evangelist Chastity Richardson, and also the granddaughter to Minister Bonnie Dixon. Alexis graduated from Washington State University with a master's degree, listen to this, y'all, with a master's degree in geophysicist. Does anybody know what that is? Yeah. She graduated on May 26, Alexis Richardson. Our next graduate is Lori D. White Rivera. We call her Lala. She is the daughter of evangelist Vivian White and the late district elder Leon White. Lori graduated on May 18th from Mercer County Community College, receiving her associate's degree 
in Applied Science Business Studies. Lori's favorite scripture can be found in Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Lori White Rivera. Our next graduate is Maisha Sapp. She is the woohoo! She is the daughter of Sister Lisa Ginyard and John Sapp. Maisha graduated on May 15th from Rutgers University, from which she received her master's degree in social work. Maisha Sapp. Our last graduate is none other than Chelsea Danielle Nicole White. Chelsea is the daughter of Lori White Rivera. She graduated on April 29th from Southern New Hampshire University, earning her master's degree in science forensic psychology. Chelsea's favorite scripture can be found in Psalms 100, 1 and 2. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Chelsea Danielle Nicole White. And at this time, we're going to ask Bishop Robinson for the anointing of our graduates and also the prayer, but I just want to say I appreciate our graduates. Some of them aren't here, and for those that came and were, were able to be here, we salute you, we celebrate you, we pray for you, we cover you with the word of God. Bishop Robinson. Thank you, Minister R. Somebody say amen. amen. Tremendous, tremendous. You got it all? I know you're going to fumble. I got it. I'll help you. Oh, I'll help you. To our graduates, there's a future for you. And uh, I'm not sure what the future holds. I do know that if we would certainly keep our eyes on the Lord and go forth, amen, he'll strengthen you. That's not saying it's going to be easy. Life is not easy. Amen. Iron sharpens iron. Sir, you're standing here by yourself. Only male. That's you, you got it together, right, bro? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, you must be from Connecticut somewhere. Yes. One of the great things, one of the great things that happens is there are people who are willing to help you and assist you. Work together. Those who are retirees and those who have gone to higher education, let's help them. Is that all right? Amen. Let's help them in Jesus' name. It's time to anoint you. I'll start from you. As you would extend your hands towards them by this time period. Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much. You have allowed these individuals, younger and old, to, to go forth. You've allowed them to pursue an academic capacity. You allowed them to go through retirement. And however it was done, Lord, you were involved in it. And Lord, as they go into tomorrow, 
to various fields of study, different school systems, different additional assignments. Be exalted in all that they do. Having obtained help from God, you move from the eighth grade to high school, high school to college, college into jobs, into other fields, trades. All of that's because, Lord, you've given us a job to do. I pray, Lord, that our eyes will be on you on a continuous basis. That we'll never, ever stop looking to you as the author and the finisher of our faith. Thank you, Lord. We, we celebrate them. We celebrate you. And we go forth and give you the glory and the praise and the honor. And this time we do pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Sisters and brothers, the class of 2023. Oh, we got something left. Graduates and retirees. Oh, yes. Oh, is, is, is uh, Vantus coming from that? When I see Vantus White to come, I think she has some book scholarships for the... Yes, yes. Show me the money. All right. Show me money. Amen. Vantus White. Oh, I'll, I'll do it. Okay. We'll be right. All right. Thank you. Uh, uh, Brother Lawrence Jr., uh, we have a book scholarship for you. Uh, for two hundred and two thousand, I mean two hundred and fifty dollars. Amen. Now that's that's a book scholarship. That's not a food scholarship. That's not a, a McDonald's scholarship. Amen. And the other ones are not here. Amen. I believe they're not here. Correct. They're not here. Amen. So 